Minister Midarachi, before we go to an audience question or two. Um, so the EU, Europe, hasn't always agreed on everything. Um, the, re the remarkable uh, vote that's taken place, again, around opening uh, movement for Ukrainian refugees, what do you see as the next steps that Europe, the EU, might undertake uh, given the likelihood that the refugee flows are going to be long term? First of all, with regard to Ukraine, I have to tell you what my Polish colleague told me a few days ago, that the first hope these people have is to go home. Most of the Ukrainians that have come to Europe, they aspire to go home as soon as possible. So we're not certain yet whether it will be a humanitarian crisis or a development crisis back in Ukraine. I would hope it's the latter. Um, now, people leave their countries for many reasons. They leave because of authoritarian uh, regimes and war, or they're being pushed by authoritarian regimes. We should remember what happened with Belarus. The case with Belarus versus Lithuania, Latvia, and Poland demonstrates how sometimes authoritarian regimes are using people for political gains. Europe needs to do more to tackle other sources of, of migration. We're talking about climate changes. We're talking about the need for support for economic growth at countries of origin and countries of transit. And I think that's where we need to do much more. The cost truly, when it comes to Europe, it's much, much higher. I will agree with my esteemed colleague from Jordan. For example, in the case of Greece, we invested in the last seven years, just through UNHCR and IOM, one billion euros for the protection of people that came through our country for this period of time. So the cost that Europe has to uh, spend within Europe, it's a multiple of what would be spent if it's done regionally. But more importantly, these people that are leaving their countries for, because of war or political reasons, the fact of the matter is their aspiration is to return to their countries. And I think it's important that these people are given the opportunity by being supported locally to, to return one day back. Now, when they come to Europe, I would like to emphasize this point again, inclusion is a given. And I think that's a very important part of the European values. When people come and seek refugee in Europe and are recognized in Europe as refugees, then they have all the tools of starting their life again. And I think that's a very important characteristic of the European Union. May I just one, one thing, my friend, from, again, from a country who's uh, said the largest per capita host of refugees, ask that question in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Again, if the crisis is not solved and people do not have the chance to go back immediately to their countries, in 10 years, they're going to have lost a lot of connection to their countries. And if a village is destroyed and a family has no house to go to, they've got no reason to go. So yes, immediately, everybody wants to go back. But 10, 15 years down the line, people build new lives. And, and, and unless they have a reason to go back, uh, they're not going to go back. So for now, yes, but give it 10, 15 years, the answer would be different. That's why I said in such cases, a development, then opportunity, how do we quickly go back and help rebuild countries that went through Absolutely. horrific Absolutely. experiences, like in the case of Syria? Isn't what we're really saying